I've made a video where I established the bare minimum components I considered capable of running CS2, but I didn't test all of these slowest components together all at the same time. So here's more of a deep dive into how that £320 PC can run Counter-Strike. Put it simply, so long as you stick to low or medium preset at 1080p, this PC can run CS2 at well over 100 FPS most of the time. But on the infrequent occasion that it does run out of RAM, it suddenly feels like your gaming monitor has been swapped out for a 60Hz TV screen. And this persists for a random amount of time. Sometimes just a few seconds, other times indefinitely until you restart the game. It's infrequent and quite random, and I wasn't able to replicate it even with several 4K Ogre video streaming in the background. What I'm testing here is a Ryzen 4 500 processor, a GeForce 970 graphics card, and 8GB of system memory. All components which I deem to be about as slow and as cheap and as limited as you can get away with. But put it simply, even in 2019, this PC specs would have been considered a fairly standard mid-range PC. Back in 2019, you'd have bought 16 gigabytes of RAM because it was super cheap back then. But this is 2025 we're talking about now. Now benchmarking CS2 is hard. I didn't want to test it on a benchmark map because it doesn't really represent what it's like to play for real. I didn't want to play against bots either. So what I did was to boot up six different deathmatch games on six different maps, and for each I tested all four graphics presets, ranging from low to very high, to see how far we can push a budget PC with a measly 8GB of RAM. These were the averages of those six averages, and the 1% lows. According to this graph, this PC is quite well suited to medium preset. Bear in mind that low and medium aren't actually 1080p because it uses FSR to some extent. High is where it gets quite pretty to look at, but then also gets a little bit juddery and less responsive. And very high is not at all suitable for CS2's reflex-based shooting gameplay. But it did look very nice, especially with 8x MSAA. That's just overkill. There's only so much we can learn from this simple graph. So let's show all six maps separately and see what's going on here. It was interesting to see Ancient performing the best at lower presets, but tapering off more quickly at higher ones. Though Inferno was definitely the hardest map to run. In fact, it proved to be a real issue for me to find a deathmatch server to benchmark on. It seems like all the bots in deathmatch would rather just vote for easier to run maps like Dust2 or Mirage instead. So with Inferno being one of the tougher maps to run, I carried out a few extra tests. I loaded up against bots and threw some smokes everywhere, which is one scenario that deathmatch doesn't test. A medium preset, all was fine. I could have smokes everywhere and the frame rate wasn't impacted. But moving up to high was where looking at and passing through smokes started to impact performance, making the experience noticeably laggier feeling and my aiming less responsive. I also noticed that a few textures would take a while to load in. This is typically an issue with there not being enough VRAM or maybe a super slow hard drive. But I think the blame here lies with the GeForce 970, which has just four gigabytes of VRAM and only 3.5 gigabytes of that is fast stuff. It can still run CS2, but this graphics card is absolutely on the edge. Maps like Dust2 and Mirage felt practically perfect to play on, especially with Reflex enabled. No signs of slowdown on those maps at all, but more demanding ones like Inferno and some of the current community made ones like Golden were enough to give it all an air of lag. Still more than 60 FPS, but still low enough to remind me that the GeForce 970 graphics card is now 11 years old and past its prime. But like I said at the start, the only real issue that would prevent me from confidently recommending this system for a PC builder on an ultra budget is the possibility that 8GB of RAM occasionally isn't enough, which caused GPU and CPU utilization to drop along with the frame rate, even if Windows was still claiming that I had a gigabyte of RAM still free. Yes, that's right, I did only test on Windows 11. Your mileage with other operating systems might be different. But on Windows 11 at least, when I switched to 32 gigabytes of the stuff, I couldn't get the slowdown to occur and it was quite common to see 9, 10 and even 11 gigabytes of RAM being used when playing CS2 under the same situations as before. So I'm pretty sure it's the RAM that's causing the issue here. You can still get by with just 8 gigabytes, but I believe it was responsible for the game occasionally becoming a 60 FPS lag fest, no matter which graphic settings I used, which makes me think this game is right on the edge of needing more, and it only takes a slight RAM leak to cap your performance to double digits, instead of the triple digits the components this computer's using could potentially yield. The Ryzen 4 500 processor has a misleading name. Despite being the 4000 series, it was released after the 5000 series and performs more like the 3000 series. So the Ryzen 5600 and above is the real deal. 
The 5500 and 5600G have only half the cache and are thus slower, and the Ryzen 4000 series has half the amount of cache again, making it much, much slower than the latest generations of processors. I'm in two camps about this. Yes, new processors are much faster. Since Ryzen's release, processors have come on in leaps and bounds, and CS2 is one of the few games to really utilise all that extra power. But at the same time, even with this cut down Ryzen 4 500, we're still talking hundreds of frames a second in a game. And where my experience and responsiveness from the PC was more dictated by the graphics card being used and which latency minimising features that graphics card supported. In fact, of this system I think the most reliable component was the Ryzen 4 500, which might have been preventing the game from running beyond about 150 FPS, but I see no problem with that in an ultra budget build given the circumstances, and I don't think the processor ever resulted in catastrophic frame rate dips or noticeable stuttering, even if the 1% lows were always below 100 FPS. The Ryzen 4 500 comes with its own cooler, it's the smallest of these three AMD coolers here. They do the job, but not a lot more, and they can be quite loud, so a possible question you might have is, should you buy a custom cooler for this processor? And I'm going to say, don't bother. The processor itself isn't power hungry, it's rated for 65 watts, and in all my testing it never went far beyond 35 when playing CS2, but more importantly, with an ultra budget build like this, even a cheap custom cooler will probably add about 10% to the price of the PC, and I just wouldn't say it's worth it unless you really care about minimising the noise that your system makes. I get this is a do as I say and not as I do situation, since I am using a custom cooler just because the PC I used for my testing previously had it, but if buying from scratch it just doesn't justify the price premium here. But I would recommend stretching your budget, if possible, a little further in other areas. As you've probably gathered from this video, the number one priority would be to get 16GB of RAM instead of just 8, just because you don't want to run out of RAM halfway through a long match and for it to cap you to 60fps for the rest of it. DDR4 RAM isn't particularly expensive, and if you can, go for faster speeds. I've been using 3200MHz in this testing, which isn't particularly fast, but for DDR4 it's not too slow either. And another thing that you'd probably want better than I've been using here is the graphics card. The GeForce 970 should be seen as an absolute bare minimum. I'd ideally get a card with at least 6GB of VRAM, just in case. The GeForce 970 shows its age in other ways too. Despite me using a 360Hz gaming monitor, the graphics card wasn't able to support more than 240Hz. You need a more recent card with faster DisplayPort or HDMI standards to be able to run these. But remember what we're testing here, CS2 on an ultra budget PC. In practice you probably wouldn't skimp so much on the PC only to splash out on a really expensive gaming monitor, and with a setup like this that I was testing, I think it would be better suited to maybe a 144Hz monitor instead, especially one with G-Sync or FreeSync to really extract as much responsiveness out of every frame as possible. And when I say it was responsive, I mean it. I'm not talking like 60fps responsive here. CS2's low latency 100 plus FPS experience is a far cry from that feeling. I certainly wouldn't mind playing competitively at the frame rates this PC could provide at lower settings. Until, of course, it runs out of RAM. Ultimately, I constructed this PC to try and establish a bare minimum system spec that I deem good enough to run the game, and there isn't really much point in trying to get the bare minimum setup in 2025, you can get a lot more performance by spending just that little bit more. Doing this won't just give you more reliable performance today, but it will put your system in better stead for future updates the game might receive. Ideally aim for a Ryzen 5000 series of processor, 16GB of RAM, and a graphics card that, ideally, isn't over a decade old. It turns out that going for the bare minimum does, indeed, give you the bare minimum.